What about ionic compounds that need a Roman numeral? For example, the Cu2SO3. When you have Cu2SO3, Cu is copper. We can't just write copper and that's it. Because when we look on the periodic table, copper, copper is in the middle right here. Copper's charge can fluctuate. It can vary. In fact, when you look here, let me get rid of some of these. When you look here, the copper can be the plus one kind of copper or the plus two kind of copper. So just writing copper is insufficient. We need extra information. So we're going to need to put a Roman numeral in this problem. So it's going to be copper Roman numeral something. I just don't know what the something is yet. Well, the way you're going to figure out what that something is, is by looking at the non-metal portion of your compound. So let's focus on that part, that SO3. SO3, we need to, that's multiple elements put together. So we need to figure out there. So to go to our chart sheet and say, what's SO3? SO3 is down here on the right-hand side. SO3, negative 2, that's called sulfite. Sulfite. Okay. So I know I can write the word sulfite. That's the name of SO3. But how do we figure out what the Roman numeral is? Well, sulfite, we saw in our charge sheet, has a charge of minus 2. There's only one sulfite there. It's not two sulfites, three sulfites, or else that sulfite ion would be in parentheses with a little 2 or a little 3. And it's not. It's just one sulfite. So if the right-hand side of that compound is negative 2, that would mean the left-hand side would have to be positive 2 total in order to balance that out. So we have two choices of what that copper ion could be. We said it could either be plus one or plus two. We also have to keep in mind that there are two coppers here. So if the copper ion was plus two, you'd have two plus twos for a total of positive four. But that's not what we want. We want a total of positive two to balance out the total negative 2 from our sulfite. That must mean that each of those coppers, each one, is plus 1. 2 plus 1s gives us a total of positive 2. That's what we want. So I'm going to put a Roman numeral 1 in the parentheses here because this Roman numeral tells you the charge on each copper, not the total charge, but the charge on each one. Each of those copper ions must be positive one. Try another one of those guys. Um, FeO. Fe is iron. When you look at where iron is on the periodic table, just saying iron isn't enough. We need a Roman numeral there. What kind of iron is it? When you look at your chart sheet here, your iron, well, you could have the plus two kind of iron or the plus three kind of iron. There's multiple kinds. We have to figure out what kind it is. So it'll need a Roman numeral. But what is the Roman numeral? The way we're going to figure out what the Roman numeral is, is by looking at that non-metal portion. That non-metal portion is just O. That's it. So O, we need to figure out what the charge of just O would be. It would have a charge of negative 2.
There's only one O. It's not in parentheses with a little two or a little three. So the whole right-hand side is negative two. That means the whole left-hand side has to be positive two. If there's only one iron there, it's got to be iron Roman numeral two. That O, what would we call just the O? Well, we're not going to say oxygen because that would be neutral oxygen. We're talking about ionic compounds. Ions. So the ion form of oxygen we call oxide. Try one more of those Roman numeral ones. They're a little tricky. Ti3PO42. Ti. Thinking, hmm, that's not a common symbol. I haven't seen that one much. You're right, you haven't. Ti is right here. Titanium. So we'll write titanium. Now, based on its location, we know that it's going to need a Roman numeral. So you might go to your chart sheet and say, all right, tell me about titanium. And then notice there is no titanium. It jumps right from tin to zinc. Well, again, these are common ions. It doesn't list every single one that's out there. So what do we do? We use the nonmetal piece that we know the charge of to figure out what the charge on that titanium ion is going to be. So the nonmetal piece. It says PO4, 2. So two PO4s. We got to figure out what PO4 is called. We go to our chart sheet and we find PO4. It's right here on the right hand side. PO4 is called phosphate. Phosphate has the charge of negative three. So I'm going to write phosphate. We know that phosphate has a charge of negative three. There's two of them. So the total negative charge in that compound would be negative six, meaning the total positive charge would have to be positive six to balance that out. There are three titaniums that are totaling positive six. So that must mean that each of those titanium ions would have to be positive two. Three positive twos gives us our total of positive six. So I'm going to write titanium, Roman numeral two, phosphate.